Willow, come in. Come in. Oh, nice to see you again. You come at a rare moment when the study is comparatively tidy. Take a look at this. You can see the floor. Um, over on my desk here, I, I've got various actually of my own books out because the reason why the study is tidy is that, um, rather um, uh, to my surprise, uh, um, Christianity Today is apparently going to do a feature on me and they sent a photographer up from London to take photos. So I thought, well, I must at least make a path on the floor for her. Um, and she insisted on getting my various books out. But she also insisted on my smoking my pipe, which was nice, because I thought I'd have to ask permission. I've just poured myself, this is um, uh, Bush Mills, Black Bush, the bottle's over there. Um, I'm just back from uh, Northern Ireland. I flew into Belfast and then went on to Coleraine. I was at the University of Ulster. Yeah. I was at the University of Ulster for a a conference on C.S. Lewis, who was, of course, an Ulsterman. And, um, anyway, I'm back. And what I thought we'd be nice to do today is I'd like to... I don't think I've ever read this poet to you in all your visits to my library. And it's high time I did, because he's one of the great 20th century poets. There's a chap called Charles Causley. And he was, um... He should have been Poet Laureate, really. Um... This is his collected poems. Uh, he was a remarkable man. He was a Cornishman. And his father was a... He was of that generation where parents were still in service. His father was a groom, you know, handling horses. And his mother was a, in domestic service, you know. And he went to primary school and then to secondary, but left at 16. And then um, was in the Navy in the uh, Second World War and saw battle and action all over the place. And partly, I think, because of the Navy and the, the tradition of sort of ballads and songs and that, he began to write ballads. He became first known writing these really moving ballads about the war and the, the, those who died and so on. But he came back to Cornwall. He went on a government scheme that allowed him to train as a teacher and went back to his old school and spent pretty much his life teaching primary school but gradually became a sort of world-renowned poet while he was about it. And um, I want to read you a couple of poems of his. I like Causley. I think his experience in the Navy and in school meant that he never became very sort of recherche and highfalutin. He's a very profound poet, but he, he, his poems are accessible and they also use metre and rhyme. And he's, I've been looking at Causley again because he is a master of taking the old ballad forms and making them new, and that's exactly what I'm trying to do in my Arthurian poetry. Anyway, I thought I'd read you two, a later one first, and then a, an earlier ballad that I particularly love. The first one isn't a ballad. Um, it's a really moving poem called Eden Rock. There's always a numinous or spiritual edge to a lot of what he does although it's never mm, that explicit. Um, anyway, if you want, he can do full rhyme beautifully, but if you want to hear the sheer subdued push and power of half rhyme, especially half rhyme that's held back as half rhyme until at the very end of the poem you get a full rhyme, then this is the poem that does it. I mean, just to show you what I mean, but half rhyme. You'll see it goes sort of rock, suit, jack, feet. So rock and jack are doing something, suit and feet are doing something. Dress, grass, hat, light. Um, but it, you don't notice it at first, but it really adds to the poetry. I think this is one of the great uh, visionary poems. It's called Eden Rock. They are waiting for me somewhere beyond Eden Rock. My father, 25, in the same suit of genuine Irish tweed, his terrier Jack still two years old and trembling at his feet. My mother, 23, in a sprigged dress drawn at the waist, ribbon in her straw hat, has spread the stiff white cloth over the grass. Her hair, the colour of wheat, takes on the light. She pours tea from a thermos, 
the milk straight from an old HP sauce bottle, a screw of paper for a cork, slowly sets out the same three plates, the tin cups painted blue. The sky whitens, as if lit by three suns. My mother shades her eyes and looks my way over the drifted stream. My father spins a stone along the water. Leisurely, they beckon to me from the other bank. I hear them call. See where the stream path is? Crossing is not as hard as you might think. I had not thought that it would be like this. <laughs> it's just an astonishing poem. I think the poet Andrew Motion said that if he could ever write as line as pure and beautiful as the last line of that poem, he'd die a happy man. Uh, so that's Eden Rock, uh, written, as you could tell, when um, Causley was quite an old man and was coming towards the end of his time and knowing that he would cross that street. Now I'm going to read you something completely different, um, slightly longer poem. It's called The Ballad of the Bread Man. And uh, I've often, I mean, you can see his experience in primary schools. You can see this as a poem that children would love. But it's a poem that, um, that adults can get a huge amount out of too. But I used to read it when I was a school teacher and when I was a vicar doing assemblies in primary schools. It always went down well. It's a retelling of a, a very well-known story, um, but in with some modern settings. So The Ballad of the Bread Man. Mary stood in the kitchen, baking a loaf of bread. An angel flew in through the window. We've a job for you, he said. God in his big gold heaven, sitting in his big blue chair, wanted a mother for his little son. Suddenly saw you there. Mary shook and trembled. It isn't true what you say. Well, don't say that, said the angel. The baby's on its way. Joseph was in the workshop, planing a piece of wood. Ah, the old man's past it, the neighbours said. That girl's been up to no good. And who was that elegant fellow, they said, in the shiny gear? The things they said about Gabriel were hardly fit to hear. Mary never answered. Mary never replied. She kept the information, like the baby, safe inside. It was election winter. They went to vote in town. When Mary found her time had come, the hotels let her down. The baby was born in an annex next to the local pub. At midnight, a delegation turned up from the farmer's club. They talked about an explosion that made a hole in the sky. They said they'd been sent to the lamb and flag to see God come down from on high. A few days later, a bishop and a five-star general were seen with the head of an African country in a bulletproof limousine. We've come, they said, with tokens for the little boy to choose, told the tale about war and peace in the television news. And after them came the soldiers, with rifle and bomb and gun, looking for enemies of the state, but the family had packed and gone. When they got back to the village, the neighbours said to a man, that boy will never be one of us, though he does what he blessed well can. He went round to all the people, a paper crown on his head. Here is some bread from my father. Take, eat, he said. Nobody seemed very hungry. Nobody seemed to care. Nobody saw the God in himself quietly standing there. He finished up in the papers. He came to a very bad end. He was charged with bringing the living to life. No man was that prisoner's friend. There's only one kind of punishment to fit that kind of crime. They rigged a trial and they shot him dead. They were only just in time. They lifted the young man by the leg. They lifted him by the arm. They locked him in a cathedral in case he came to harm. They stored him safe as water under seven rocks. One Sunday morning, he burst out like a jack-in-the-box. Through the town he went walking. He showed them the holes in his head. Now do you want any loaves, he cried. Not today, they said. Uh, astonishing poem. 
I, I love it that the pub is the Lamb and Flag, which is, of course, a pub in Oxford opposite the Eagle and Child. But the Lamb and Flag, of course, is the image of Christ, triumphant, the Lamb of God with the flag. And um, some phrases from poems stay, stay with you forever. He was charged with bringing the living to life. That is just genius. And, of course, the other thing is when they stow him in the cathedral and they stored him safe they, safe as water under seven rocks. And, of course, he's not safe at all. And sometimes I wonder whether the seven rocks aren't the seven sacraments of the church that should be bringing Jesus to us, but have some become in some places just an empty ritual. But, of course, the seven rocks are not enough to hold him. And then comes this wonderful offer of the loaves again and this very wry, sad reply of all those all those centuries of refusal. <laughs> Not today, they said. It's a brilliant reimagining. It's a kind of making strange and lifting the veil from an old story. So that's that's Charles Causley, and I I, uh, I strongly commend his verse. It's uh, it's beautiful and highly accessible. Anyway, as the Irish would say, Slancha, good to see you. <laughs>